twice. Um, it's now time for member statement. The member from Wellington, per, uh, Wellington Halt Hills. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Last year's Christmas ice storm was an event that we will not soon forget. Our riding of Wellington Halton Hills was amongst the hardest hit areas. In the aftermath of the storm, the provincial government quickly committed to providing assistance to municipalities to help cover cleanup costs. On February the 18th, I spoke in this House and urged the government to work with our municipal partners to ensure that they were properly compensated for legitimate ice storm costs. I also wrote directly to the previous minister several times in support of our local municipalities. However, almost a year has now passed and they are growing increasingly frustrated with a process which seems to keep changing on them and is much more complex and complicated than it perhaps needs to be. The town of Halton Hills originally submitted a claim for $1.8 million. The government then changed the guidelines on them and they're now working towards a new unofficial deadline of year's end. The township of Pusslinch had to compile 330 pages to support their claim of $45,000. The Township of Centre Wellington is working hard to complete a $302,000 claim. The Township of Guelph Aramasa is also working to finish their submission before the deadline. The Grand River Conservation Authority needs $550,000 and, conser and Conservation Halton is requesting $129,000 and I found out today that the Hamilton Conservation Authority is also planning to submit a claim. Mr. Speaker, I trust our local partners and I'm confident that they would submit verifiable claims or I wouldn't be standing in this house now and raising this issue. They should listen to my colleague, the member for Oxford. Let's work together and get this done. Thank here, you very here. much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. <clears throat> Number seven, the member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to bring attention to the excellent work done by Windsor Essex branch of the Canadian Mental Health Association. Since their very first meeting in 1971, the Windsor Essex branch, CMHA, has evolved in to become a vital local resource for people suffering from mental health challenges in Windsor and Essex County. The Windsor-Essex branch offers client-focused, community-based programs such as their Homeless Initiative Program or their Employment Support Program. These programs help keep people out of hospital, assist them in becoming self-empowered and ultimate, ultimately fully invested members of their local community. In order to build on their mandate, the CMHA is looking to develop community training programs. These programs would allow mental health professionals to train other frontline workers, like firefighters, police officers, paramedics, nurses, and correctional officers, to properly care for people suffering from mental illness in their various work environments. Speaker, professionals in my community want this training, and the CMHA is willing to provide it, but they need financial assistance. I hope all members of this chamber can agree to help find ways to provide assistance and support to the development of CMHA community training programs in Windsor West and in their own communities. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, I had the opportunity to attend the Toronto Fair Trade Show hosted in Davenport's very own Gladstone Hotel, an iconic institution for the arts known not just in my riding but across the country and the world. Organized by Rafiq Riyadh, the Fair Trade Show was the first of its kind in Canada, developing awareness of fair trade products and supporting producers and local artisans from over 25 developing countries. The overarching theme of this fantastic event was to raise public awareness and consciousness that our individual consumer choices can raise the standard of living for countless people everywhere. The show demonstrated the importance of ensuring the goods we purchase are produced in an ethical and sustainable way, and indeed hundreds of Torontonians came to Davenport for the Fair Trade Show to do just that. There was, was tremendous energy in the room as participants roamed around the Gladstone Learning uh, Hotel learning about fair trade. Fifteen fantastic vendors were featured with a unique set of products from different artisans and producers around the world. The company Social Gem sold jewellery produced by female artisans in Indonesia who they, found, who they fund to assist with school fees. As a matter of fact, the necklace I'm wearing right now is from the Fair Trade Show. Beautiful. This necklace is made from rice straw paper and was produced by deaf and mute women involved in El Nasifa, an Egyptian charity working in the field of craftsmanship and social development. Mr. Speaker, I'm very happy that this wonderful event took place in my riding at Davenport and looking forward to next year's event. Event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to challenge the government to take responsibility for their gross fiscal mismanagement and the devastating economic and human costs associated. 
Yesterday's report from the Auditor General again highlighted the failures of this Liberal government. Yep. The lack of value for money found in this audit is extremely disturbing. For instance, $2 billion spent on smart meters, a decision that the AG points out was not supported by a cost-benefit analysis. Speaker, I ask, oh, no. who does that? If you're running a business, you Liberal. must take a look at your analysis in that regard. And they spent over a billion beyond the original, original estimated costs. Yet, there, there is also another problem, global adjustment, which by next year, the total cost will be $50 billion over and above the market costs of electricity. You, we all know in Ontario, we can't afford higher electricity costs because we're paying subsidies out for energy that we no longer need. Global adjustment has significantly impacted time of use rates, now accounting for 70% of electricity costs. This mismanagement of energy and the economy has created hardships for the people and businesses of my riding of Huron Bruce and across this province. Even the manufacturing sector in my riding I have spoke with told me they've been forced to send people home during operation hours as opposed to paying global adjustment all because energy prices are too high. Mr. Speaker, it's time for this government to sm start making smart economic Thank decisions. You. Smart. Thank you. Smart. Member of Statements, the member from Bremen League, Warren Morton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to discuss the issue of aggregate and dump truck uh, drivers. There's a serious issue that's been going on for over a decade, and this government has done nothing to address it. Whether it's dump truck drivers whose trucks are being overloaded because the loaders are putting too much weight into that truck. The drivers have no control over it, and the drivers end up getting the fines. This government has not addressed this problem. When it comes to aggregate drivers, aggregate drivers also don't have any control over where the loads are placed, but when they go pull into a MTO enforcement facility, the MTO then gives them fines and tickets for axle weight. They can't control which axle the loader puts the material onto. To address this situation, the government needs to implement realistic policies, implement proper legislation that addresses the realities that these drivers face. This government has time and time again given makeshift solutions to this problem by providing exemptions that sometimes work and sometimes don't work. Drivers need to be treated with respect. This government can make the proper changes, but is not committed to doing it. Providing fake solutions, makeshift solutions is not the answer. The government needs to have a systemic overhaul of the system to ensure there's true fairness. At the end of the day, the loaders, the companies that load the trucks need to be held responsible, not the drivers. I ask this government to do something. A decade of lack of action is simply unacceptable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, you've heard me share with you and the members of this House how in my riding of Kitchener Centre, we are the oldest and the largest German community in Canada. This past week, Kitchener City Hall turned the clock back to celebrate an ancient Germanic tradition called the Chris Kindle Market. For four days, our City Hall was transformed into a medieval marketplace, and 40,000 people showed up to celebrate this wonderful, unique experience over the course of the festival. Many people these days are complaining that Christmas is too commercial, too fast, and too flashy. If you feel that way, then you need to experience the Chris Kindle Market. There were booths and stalls full of traditional handmade Christmas ornaments, nutcrackers, wood-carved toys, handcrafted jewelry, handmade knitted sweaters and scarves, and of course we had lots of tasty German foods. But wait, there's more. Choirs and dancers wandered through City Hall over the course of the festival, depicting various Christmas characters. Uh, they are traditional characters, and they welcomed everyone. Mr. Speaker, for 18 years, this very festive market has shown us how Christmas was celebrated in a much simpler time. It's shown us how, in the city of Kitchener, once called Berlin, people marked the holiday season. Mr. Speaker, I want to wish everyone a very safe and a happy holiday. Merry Christmas, and as the Germans say, Frohe Weihnachten. Thank you, Speaker. In my riding of Stormont Dundas in South Glengarry, we are blessed with many wonderful and caring people and organizations. One such organization is the Winchester District Memorial Hospital. The hospital has gained a high level of confidence and support in our community due to its superior level of care. In fact, just last month, it once again was acknowledged with two awards. The first, a quality health 
Care Workplace Award from the Ontario Hospital Association in recognition of its efforts made to improve the quality of work life as well as, as the quality of care delivered. Second, a Workplace Health Award from the Eastern Ontario Health Unit for exceeding expectations and encouraging employees to develop and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Mr. Speaker, I have come to expect such awards as they are a regular occurrence at this hospital which is reflected in the community support received during its recent fundraising activities. The riding of Stormont Dundas in South Glengarry is geographically a very large riding, stretching over 100 kilometres from the Quebec border westerly to include Bainesville, Cornwall, Long Sioux, Iroquois and Winchester. It is not unusual that people where I live in the far east of the riding tell me that they are travelling to Winchester over an hour away to receive health care at the hospital driving by numerous other health care options. I believe that says it all. So once again, congratulations to the staff and frontline workers at the Winchester District Memorial Hospital. Job well done. Thank you. Okay. Member statement from member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, yesterday my uh, esteemed colleague from Halton had the pleasure of announcing new GO service for uh, on the Milton Line for all of us who are served by GO Transit on Milton. Great. And those seven stations serve commuters in uh, uh, Halton region and in particular Milton in Lisgar, Meadowvale, Streetsville, Erin Mills, Cooksville, and Dixie. And Speaker, these are two badly needed new trains providing service on the Milton Line One, which are going to connect, which is going to connect in Lisgar, Meadowvale, and Streetsville somewhere just shortly before nine, between 8:40 and nine, which is going to enable people to be able to get down who don't need to uh, spend a full day in, in Toronto, and most valuably, um, one that's going to leave Union Station at 3:40. So if yours is a short day to spend in Toronto, you're gonna, now going to have an opportunity to take that GO train instead of taking your car downtown and paying the price to park downtown. Now, Speaker, in the last uh, 11 years, we have more than doubled capacity on the uh, Milton Line, gone from five trains to nine in January, with the new service taking effect on Monday, January the 5th. Uh, the trains have all expanded from 10 to 12 cars. We've expanded all of the platforms on the stations to accommodate 12 cars, and especially at Streetsville, expanded parking, built a new parking lot on the north side, resurfaced the station, implemented the Presto card, and of course built the new Streetsville GO bus repair facility. All great news for people in Mississauga and Milton. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member Samich, the member from Kingston in the Islands. Mr. Speaker, in a country where all but our First Nations peoples are immigrants and where our diversity, ethnicity, colour and religion is not just tolerated but celebrated in our Charter of Rights and Freedoms, it is deeply troubling that there are some who seek to perpetuate the hatred and fear of another. As you may be aware, Mr. Speaker, that recently the Islamic Centre of Kingston was vandalised by persons as yet unknown. I stand here today to denounce these mindless acts unequivocally. This hateful criminal behaviour is reprehensible and has no place in our city or our society. Kingston prides itself on its multicultural strength, on its deep embrace of minorities. It's a community that cares. If my Muslim sisters and brothers are hurt, then I am hurt too. We are one, and I stand with our Muslim community. The Islamic community in Kingston is, in fact, a shining example of inclusivity and kindness to others. They are bright, welcoming, respectful, inquisitive, and a loving and generous people. Fellow members, I urge you to stand up against racism in all forms, in words and in acts, no matter how small or large. Shokran, Toda, thank you. Teshikuradim, miigwech. Thank you. 